Today we begin our discussion of animals and we're going to start out by listing some characteristics of our animals. First of all, they're multicellular and the only animals that don't have cells that are arranged into tissues that will pr uh, produce organs and organ systems are our sponges. Um, and the evolution of the large multicellular bodies came about because the tissues are organized into organs and the organs into organ systems. Now, the second characteristic is that animal cells don't have cell walls. We know that. But they're held together by junctions or structures that extend from one cell to the another. And the skeleton supports the tissues of the large animals. The third characteristic is they have a period of embryonic development. And during this embryonic development, the cells, that's when they become specialized and the tissues form. And then eventually the organs and the organ systems are going to be formed. The fourth characteristic of animals, they are heterotrophs. And of course we all know that heterotrophs have to consume their food. Uh, the only ones that don't have a central cavity for ingesting their food and digesting it are our sponges. The fifth characteristic, they are modal. Um, in order to be heterotrophs, they have to be able to move about to capture prey. So animals are mobile at some point during their life cycle. The sixth characteristic is they have a nervous system and muscle tissue. The muscles tissue allows them to move and the nervous tissue allows for rapid communication between the cells and it coordinates their movement and their response to stimuli. Their seventh characteristic is they are diploid. Their gametes are heterogametes. That means they're different sizes. Eggs are much larger than sperm and their sperm are flagellated. They have flagella. That's the little tail that we often see on the sperm. The way the gametes are produced is by meiosis or meiosis. Sometimes there are larval stages as some of the animals are developing. And the larvae are immature individuals and they have a body form that is very different from their body form as an adult. Uh, and because they have different body forms, larvae and adults will eat different foods and maybe maybe even live in different locations. And when the larvae are transformed into adults, it's by a process that's called metamorphosis. Now, when we look at body plans of animals, in embryonic development, the fertilized egg will make a hollow ball of cells that we call a blastula. And then some of the cells of the blastula will begin to invaginate in and they produce a gastrula. And the opening is the blastopore. And that eventually will become a gut for the mature animal. If the species has a separate mouth and anus, the tube will extend through the length of the embryo. Um, one opening of it becomes the mouth and the other, of course, becomes the anus. This is showing some metamorphosis of grasshoppers at the bottom frogs at the top and then the butterflies on the right and you can see how the larval stage is very different from the adult stage in these except for down there with the grasshopper it's not they don't have a larval stage they have something called a nymph stage which just looks like a small immature adult the typical animal life cycle you have the sperm and the eggs that are formed by meiosis and of course they're haploid and the sperm fertilizes the egg and that's what makes our adult eventually which is going to be diploid and it's just a cycle that repeats. <laughs>